Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome back to Taito Ecology. We're returning to our grasslands biome today and I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit nervous to see what has happened here over the past month as a group of our bison dies right before our very eyes. We have 81 notifications here guys. And it seems like most of them are actually our mushrooms. Our red foxes died? Oh my goodness, did we place those? for the deer mice actually we may have placed those down for the deer mice and they may have starved after they took care of all of our deer mouse problems but look at all of those mushrooms our mushrooms just had one after the next while we were gone and of course our snakes too but i kind of expected that because um in the last episode I was saying that all of our snakes over at zone three were unfortunately um, not seeing the food that they needed. So it seems like only one group is still here. I was kind of expecting that they would all be gone because uh, they really don't have anything to eat over here unless they're munching on maybe our uh, our ants or something. I'm not sure, but um, I'm not surprised to see that our snakes are gone. I am really worried about the deer mice though <laughs> because in the last episode, the deer mice that were over by this tree over here were slowly counting down, or was it this one? It might've been this one. They were slowly counting down toward uh, their reproduction dates and all of them were at the very same time. They were within a couple days of each other. So let's see how bad this is. Oh my goodness, I'm a little bit nervous. This one has 19 juveniles, but only five adults. This one has also 19, are they the same? Okay, so it looks like um this one actually only has <laughs> one juvenile. This one has 23, this one has 56. Oh no, 10 over here, five over here. So it's not as bad as our last uh, deer mouse explosion, <laughs> but it is still pretty bad as you can see. Um, there are a lot of deer mice down here right now. There are quite a few just, uh, moseying around in the grasses right now as our cougar is way out here, probably trying to grab one for a snack, I would imagine. And here's a mushroom too, so this lonely little mushroom managed to survive, I guess. <laughs> so that's good. It sounds like we really need to place down a lot more mushrooms in the area though, because, um, for some reason... They're all dying off. I, I would have expected that um, the deer mice were eating them all, but it seems like most of the deer mice are gone. So I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not sure who's eating them. I'm not sure uh, where they're going to, but then again, look at all the mushrooms we have right here. I guess whatever is happening to our mushrooms is not happening over in zone one because uh, there are very, very many mushrooms over there. So I don't think we have to worry about that. Um, How about these mice? This was where the mice were in a, a little conga line. They look like a snake over here because there were so many of them. So there's 15 juveniles in this group and there's 17 in here, which means that we are definitely making a dent in the deer mouse population right now. This is definitely a much more manageable population than what we had before. I know it still looks a little bit bad with all of the little specks roaming around in the grass, but I think <laughs> as our snakes die off slowly, one by one, we are definitely doing um, a pretty good job at managing them because it was a lot worse before. If you saw our last videos in the grasslands, you probably know what I'm talking about. There were deer mice in this entire zone just taking over the whole thing, including this tree. They destroyed our tree, but look at this weird stuff hanging down from this tree. This is interesting. What on earth is that? <laughs> well, it's flowering, so I guess uh, those are just the little flowers on our big, what is this, our eastern cottonwood. So there we go. And unfortunately, I did place this tree directly on top of our badgers. You can barely see their territory poking out there. I don't know what I was thinking, guys. That was very, very silly of me. So uh, we currently have a badger family living directly inside of that tree because uh, that's just what happened. That's just where they're going to be now, I guess. <laughs> but let's place a couple mushrooms over here where they're a little bit more uh, sparse at the moment. And, oh my gosh, let's go in here and see if our wolves reproduced. They were supposed to uh, reproduce in the month that we were gone. So hopefully we have little baby wolves wandering around this tiny little forest now. Yes, there are seven wolf pups somewhere in the biome right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have to find them. We have to find at least one of the wolf pups. Um, I wonder how far away they would have gone. I'm not sure if they all would have stuck to the forest or if they would have wandered off. It doesn't look like any of them are here right now. 
there's just this bison currently staring at this wall over here. Um, Mr. Bison, <laughs> you probably don't want to be in wolf country. You do not want to be in the wolf forest because when they do come home, they are going to eat you right up because I think they actually destroyed all of our uh, antelope again, which is a little bit unfortunate. And it looks like our deer died off too. Oh dear, I hope that's not uh, spelling disaster for our wolves. I'm sure they need a lot more food to sustain themselves now that they have seven pups to feed. Seven extra tiny little yipping mouths that can't hunt for themselves. <laughs> so let's put our mule deer back over here. I believe we put them by this tree because this was their favorite food, right? Is that how it went? Um, I'm gonna place them right over here and then take a look at and uh, see what this is right here. The honey mesquite. Okay, was that their favorite food? I kind of need to refresh myself on their biodex, I feel like. Um, let's see, their diet. They do not care for dry or dead leaves. Mule deers prefer fleshy fruits and vegetables with a lot of digestible content and nutrients. So maybe the um, honey mesquite had a lot of fruit on it. That might be, I'm not sure. <laughs> there was some reason why we placed them over here though. And um, we always placed our antelope on this side over here. Um, so we'll do that as well. If I can find them, where are our antelope in here? Um, the pronghorn antelope, there we go. I believe the pronghorn antelope liked these bushes, the big sagebrush. So uh, we need to make sure that they have enough food as well. And it looks like our fish also need to be replenished. So we'll use a hundred of our uh, little energy points <laughs> to make sure that our fish are full in this river here because something definitely likes to eat them. I'm not sure if it's our wolves or maybe some of our big cats. Who like to go fishing but something is munching away at those fish very very quickly and i really want to find one of these wolves i still haven't found any of the wolf pups wait a second is that one right there it's a tiny tiny little creature i think it is i think this is a wolf pup it's only two weeks old oh my gosh we found our first uh, wolf pup now there's seven of these wandering around in the grasses here so there has to be more crawling around somewhere, but this is our very first wolf pup today. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so tiny too. Such an itty bitty wolf. It's actually below all of this grass, <laughs> all of this tiny grass. It would get lost in our switch grass. I have a feeling that may be why we can't find these wolf pups because they're just so tiny. They blend in so well, which is good because that means that um, the cougars will probably have a little bit of a tougher time finding them because I'm sure a cougar would pick off a wolf pup if it had the opportunity to do so. Um, I have a feeling that they are probably not the best of friends and we do have a group of cougars right over here keeping an eye on all of these deer mice. We placed a lot of predators over here in the last episode just to make sure that these deer mice wouldn't explode and I guess we did okay. I guess we did a pretty good job. There are still a lot of territories of deer mice and I'm a little bit concerned that all of these juveniles are going to split off into their own groups pretty soon if we don't keep a, a very very close eye on them. But the problem is, it seems like these big apex predators here like to munch on the snakes a little bit more than they like to eat the mice. So the problem is like I place all of these snakes down to eat the mice because snakes like to eat mice, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the snakes are very fond of mice and um, they don't get the chance to really eat the mice because our cougars and our coyotes and I think even our badgers like to eat the snakes before they can uh, get their own meals. So that's the issue that I've been having keeping the deer mice under control, but so far it seems like we're doing pretty good. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but um, they're not out of control yet. And these bison, they really want to wander into this forest here. I guess they wanted a little change of scenery, it looks like. Um, but it, it's kind of a bad spot for you. <laughs> I told that other bison to get out of here because you guys are going to get eaten if you're not careful. You guys are definitely going to get eaten by all of the wolves in the area, especially when they come back. Wait a second, what is this creature over here? Is this, uh... Oh, this is our cougar. Okay, he's just curled up for a nap. I was a little bit worried that this thing might have been dead. <laughs> From a distance, it looked like it was uh, doing very, very poorly, but I guess he's okay. I'm starting to feel like we should maybe think about replenishing the plants in this area too. I know a lot of the grass is actually spread over 
to uh, Zone 2 since our little deer mouse incident. <laughs> but I have a feeling that we can uh, properly spread all of our plants around without worrying too much. Let me just take a quick peek at these guys to make sure. Um, there's only one lone adult in here with seven babies to look after. There's... Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait a second. Wait a second, guys. I think I need to place a couple more predators over here to uh, control this because there's a lot of babies in these groups, and that concerns me a lot. <laughs> and our poor ba bobcat. One of the bobcats actually died off. And um, our badger is also alone. Oh my gosh, so they're like the lone rangers of this realm right now, watching over all of the deer mice in the area. <laughs> I hope they've made good friends, and it looks like um this wolf pack, which we only placed over here to keep track of all of the deer mice, is also having a little bit of trouble. So I guess all of the predators over here need to kind of band together to uh, <laughs> create their own little society of uh, predators, I guess. But we're going to add a couple more in to make sure that the deer mice don't become uh, a nuisance like they did in the uh, previous episode. So let's see, where are our snakes? Um, I do want to place some snakes over here and hope that they have better luck than the snakes in the other areas of the biome, but where on earth are they? <laughs> where on earth are our snakes? There they are, they're at the very beginning of this uh, little list here. I guess I just missed them. So we'll place a group of garter snakes right there, some king snakes over here, and the rattlesnakes too. I assume that the rattlesnakes would actually be um, better to place down because they're poisonous snakes and because they have this buff here, it means that only certain creatures like the badger <laughs> can uh, eat them. So it looks like our bobcat wouldn't be able to munch on them because um, they don't have the buff that allows them to eat poisonous life forms. So I'm just assuming that the rattlesnakes would be um, a good creature to have in here because not as many of our apex predators can uh, munch away at them. So we're going to place a whole bunch of rattlesnakes in the area too to hopefully control this crazy population. I always seem to build these walls of snakes around <laughs> the deer mice just like as if that's really going to help us. I don't know but uh, hopefully, hopefully when we come back here it'll be a little bit better. And here's our little coyote over here, also staring at the wall. A lot of these animals seem to like to stare at the wall today. <laughs> I wonder if they're wishing that they could get out of our biome. I mean, I know it's a little bit crazy with all of these deer mice here. This guy in particular seems to be want to uh, seems to want to be set free at the moment. Are you okay? <laughs> He's just creeping slowly toward this wall. Like maybe, maybe if I stare at it long enough, it'll just uh, disappear. I'm sorry, little coyote, but you're kind of stuck here for now. You really need to help us with this deer mouse problem. So you're stuck here at the moment. And actually, um, what I want to think about is the future of our biomes. While we're definitely not going to be abandoning the grasslands completely, we have actually unlocked everything that we can here. We've unlocked all of the zones, we've unlocked all of the creatures and all of the plants. So there are two more biomes in the game that we haven't looked at yet, which are the desert biome and the rainforest biome. So if you guys would leave a comment down below with which one you would prefer us to take a look at first, then I would appreciate it very much. And then hopefully we can take a look at a brand new biome very soon. So that would be a lot of fun, and um, I hope you guys are looking forward to that too. I know there are some animals that carry between the different biomes. I'm not sure which ones they are. I have a feeling maybe we would see like our rattlesnake in the desert as well. But um, it'll be a lot of fun to test out, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new creatures too in both the rainforest and the desert. So yeah, guys, just leave a comment down below with which one you would prefer, and uh, that is the one that we will hopefully be visiting next. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode today. And I will see you all next time. Bye!